Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video I'm going to be kicking off a brand new series which is going to be a three UK stocks to buy and I'm probably going to do this every other month just because I think that every month is probably a little bit too frequent given that that would mean making 36 stock recommendations in a single year um, and I don't think anybody should be making 36 recommendations for stocks to buy in the UK. Um, I'll also do a US equivalent so look out for that one. Um, but without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first stock that we are starting with today is Autotrader. So I'm sure everybody's heard of Autotrader, but if you haven't, they are a British automotive classified advertising business um, and they specialize in both new and used vehicles. So in effect, car dealerships and individuals that want to sell their cars um, will come to Autotrader for their cars to be listed on Autotrader's website. Um, and they are very similar to Rightmove, but for the car industry. So the reason I make that comparison is because Rightmove pretty much has total control over the housing market. Um, if you want to sell your house, you go to Rightmove or you go to list on Rightmove. Um, I think they have something like a 90% market share, um, Rightmove do, and I think Autotrader have a similar percentage for cars. So they are the dominant player in the new and used car sales industry, and that has allowed them to consistently grow their revenues and profits year on year. And as we can see here, that is translating into strong earnings growth over the next five years, with analysts anticipating 12% per year compounded. So that is very strong indeed. Um, another positive for Autotrader is that they have a very strong balance sheet. So they have a current ratio of three, which is excellent. Anything above one um, is typically what you should look for. Um, so what that means is that they have three times as many current assets as they do current liabilities. Um, so that is very good to see. So the thing that I really like about Auto Trader is that they aren't a traditional car dealership. So they don't have all of the fixed operating costs that you'd see for a car dealership. Um, and so they have very strong gross margins, which means that they are very profitable. And we can see here that over the last three years, their net income has increased consistently, which is very good to see. And they are very cash flow generative as well. So their cash flows remain fairly consistent. And here they've been posting 200 million pounds per year in free cash flow, which is good to see as well. So Auto Traders year end actually runs to the end of March, which means that they haven't released their 2021 results yet. So if we just look to their half year results to the end of September, um, and this was something that caught my eye here. So the report reads that the demand for cars has been strong since early June, with consumer demand on auto trader consistently being 20% or more above prior year levels. So I think there was a lot of concern because with COVID-19 and with the uncertainty around that, the expectation was that people wouldn't be looking for new cars to purchase new cars, whether that is actually brand new or used. And when we look to their presentation for December 2020, we can see that new car ad views were up 20% on their website and used car views were up 10%. So clearly they haven't been impacted too badly by COVID-19 in terms of people looking to buy either a new car or a used car. And I think that their year-end results won't be as bad as what many people were fearing. So not only have they noticed a increased number of users visiting their site, they were actually noticing like for like price increases versus the prior year in every month following March 2020, um, which is just incredible. So we can see that year on year prices increased anywhere from four and a half percent to eight and a half percent, which is fantastic, which means that retailers are able to increase their prices, meaning that there is a lot of demand for cars, which is only going to benefit auto trader as more cars on their website means more revenue and more profit. So I think long term, due to their market dominance, I'm expecting a lot of growth with this company. With that being said, they're only around 6% off their all time high. So I would consider waiting for their earnings report to come out, which should be in around at the end of June or the beginning of July and see how those results were and see how the share price moves with that. So the next stop we're going to look at is S4 Capital, which is a relatively new digital media company founded by Sir Martin Sorrell. And if you don't know who Martin Sorrell is, he is the founder of WPP, which is the largest media company by revenue. Um, so you couldn't really ask for somebody better leading the company. Um, they're a very new company, but they are already worth three billion pounds in market capitalization. Um, and they are just growing at a phenomenal rate. They are a highly acquisitive business with incredible growth. 
and we don't tend to get growth companies like this in the UK. So if we look to their 2020 results, their revenue was up 59% to 343 million pounds, which is just phenomenal growth. And you don't tend to get companies in the UK growing at that kind of speed at this size already. So they are doing incredibly well. So they're posting fantastic growth and the digital marketing space is growing at an incredible rate as well. So the entire media market is worth around $550 billion per year and digital is currently 50% of that. And that is expected to grow to 70% by 2024, which is what we can see here. So that's an additional 20% on top of that $550 billion. So digital marketing is expected to increase by $110 billion within the next three years or so. So there's a lot of room for potential for S4 Capital growth. So in terms of the kind of clients that S4 Capital have, they have some really big names, BMW, Mini, Cisco, PayPal. Um, they've managed to sign new contracts with the likes of Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Amazon, Adobe, Netflix. So all of these companies are continuing to use S4 Capital services. Um, and when you've got companies like that, signing up to a renewer contract it means that you must be doing something well so that is a really positive sign so s4 capital massive growth company and a lot of potential so s4 capital have a current market cap of three billion pounds if you compare that with wpp who have a market cap of around 10 billion pounds but aren't growing anywhere near as fast they're more of an established company whereas s4 capital is the disruptor in this space so if you're looking for a growth company then s4 capital could be one worth having a look at the only thing that i would say regarding s4 capital is that they are not currently profitable so there is that risk um, but that is largely due to them reinvesting in the business, making a lot of acquisitions so that they can grow at an incredible rate, such as 60% per year. It's not really a concern of mine as their gross margins are really good. So their gross margins are around 85%, which is just fantastic. And they're very close to profitability anyway. So in 2019, they posted a £10 million loss. In 2020, they posted a £4 million loss. And I suspect that at the end of 2021, they will be very close to profitability, depending on what acquisitions they make throughout the year. So it's very positive for S4 Capital. And the final company on my list is Severfield. Now this may be a company that you've never heard of, but they are the largest structural steel specialist in the UK. They've had quite a run up in their share price recently. So from the end of October at 53 pence, up to 78 pence now at the end of April represents a 47% gain. So they have gone up quite significantly recently, um, but they are still off their all time highs, which is good to see. I think they've got more room to grow. So one thing that you may not know is that they were the contractor for steel for the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, which is quite interesting. And actually that's a huge project. So clearly um, they're well trusted and well renowned in the business. I think the Tottenham Stadium cost in the region of a billion pounds to build, which is one of the most expensive stadiums or sporting stadiums in history. Um, and clearly the fact that Severfield have been selected to work on that goes to show you how respected they are in the industry, which is really good to see. If we look at their five year income statement, we can see consistent growth year on year in both revenues and profit. They also pay a dividend of around 2.9 pence per share, which is the equivalent of around a three and a half percent dividend yield. So that's really quite good. And their dividend cover is 2.7 times, so they can more than afford to pay out that dividend. So there's a low chance of that dividend being reduced, which is a good sign as well. So Severfield also have a March year end, so we don't yet know their full year results for 2021. So just looking to the half year results for 2020, their revenue was 186 million for the six months to September 2020. And you compare that with the prior year and the revenue was 132 million. So that represents a 40% increase in revenue, which is just phenomenal given the year that we've had um, taken into account COVID and the lockdowns and things like that. So certainly wouldn't expect 40% year on year um, revenue growth going forward, but it just goes to show you that there is some growth potential. And I do think that this company can grow it, you know, somewhere between 10 and 12% revenue per year. Um, going forward. So that is really positive as well. And I think a lot of that growth is going to come from the government's plan to increase spending on infrastructure. Um, so there have been a lot of commitments made by Chancellor Rishi Sunak, um, such as £27.5 billion investment in English roads, £7 billion in national home building, £23 billion in HS2, and a £4 billion to a levelling up fund. So these pledges by the government to invest in infrastructure will definitely serve Severfield well. 
and I expect them to grow as a result of that. So just at the end of the video, I'm going to provide my personal price targets for each of these three companies. Now I've calculated these one year price targets based on what I think the earnings are going to be in a year's time and what I think that the PE ratio will be in a year's time. Of course, both of those things could be wrong, so do bear that in mind. This is just my opinion only. Um, but for Auto Trader, I have a one year price target of 650 pence which will give us an upside of 14%. For S4 Capital, I've got a price target of 630 pence, which would be a potential upside of 12.5%. And for Severfield, I've got a one-year price target of 90 pence, which would be a potential upside of 14%. So nothing too outrageous there, but some strong growth figures nonetheless. And that is all for today's video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, make sure to look out for the US Stocks to Buy edition as well. And until next time, guys, thank you.